Hello, hello, and thank you again for joining me in another Applied Knowledge um, tutorial, I'm going to call this one. Um, it's been a while. Um, I was going to do another beat production video. My first one where it actually shows you building a beat and things like that, but I haven't found um, a screen capturing software just yet. So I kind of put that out to the side. But one thing I've been I've been very eager to share is um, about finances. So this video is entitled "Increasing Your Financial IQ Part One," and it's going to be about financial statements. So um, I've been reading uh, a book called "Rich Dad Poor Dad." Um, I'm actually on my second one right now. Um, and it's taught me a lot about finances and myself as a person. Uh, and if you haven't read the book, I recommend that you do. If uh, finances and managing yourself and getting ahead financially is something that you're interested in, then that's a book that I do highly recommend that you read. Um, so like I said, yeah, I've been very eager to share this and, and what I've learned so far. And the first step I want to talk about is how you can get ahead financially. Uh, so the first thing you can do um, to get ahead is by looking at your spending habits. So uh, if you feel the need to buy something you want every time you get paid or um, you just know your spending habits are bad, then it's going to be a difficult adjustment for you at first. But it's okay. Um, most importantly, you're going to want to change your mind on how you think about yourself and your financial situation you know what i'm saying um which is okay because it might not even be entirely your fault it's not entirely your fault the way you think um because it all starts at home and how you were groomed and what you were taught and the things that you were exposed to at a young age um and then you're taught to believe things that aren't necessarily even true so um one thing I'll say is like you're definitely not gonna do a full 360 in a day. You might learn some, you might hear some things and learn some things that I say in this video that may help you today, but you're definitely not gonna change your whole situation today because things just take time. You need to learn things on your own. You're not gonna be taught everything, and it's okay. So, um, uh, my advice is if you do hear something that you can implement today, right now, then that will be the greatest time to do it. Is at is right when you hear it, write it down right away that you can implement it and start there. Um, so, uh, yeah, so um, moving on. If you didn't grow up wealthy, chances are your parents or people around you were always talking about how broke they were or how they couldn't afford something or maybe you heard someone say it that wasn't in your household. Um, so the thing I learned in this book was that finances aren't taught in schools, but the habits are picked up at home. And depending on how you grew up and how your finances were treated, it was either good or bad habits, uh, which in most cases, they're usually bad habits if you didn't grow up wealthy. <laughs> so something the author stresses a lot, and his name is Robert Kiyosaki, I hope I'm pronouncing his last name right, um, was that the rich do not work for money. The money works for them, and I'll explain that more into detail uh, in a minute here. Um, so what does this mean? It means that they've educated themselves on how money works, that they don't need to depend on a job for income or security. Um, they found the formula, which is knowing and seeing how money actually works. Um, so nowadays, so many people want to find a good job that pays good and hopefully has benefits that still never get ahead you know they still don't end up getting ahead because of their lack of financial education and two because of their uh spending habits um so they'll work all their life dump money in the 401k and then retire uh, you know there's not absolutely nothing wrong with that because there's people that just like to work in the work field nothing wrong with that um but just me personally i don't want to work in the workforce my entire life so i had to figure something out i just knew that Working in the factory is something I was not going to do my entire life, so I had to find something else. Um, so currently, 
I've been beginning to figure out how money works and what I need to do in order to reach the financial goals that I have set for myself and what I want to see happen in my life and carry on to my son's life now that he's here and um, and to carry on into generations, something that I can teach him now and hopefully that'll change and stay that way. Um, but in the book, he describes people running in the rat race. And what's, what, what is a rat race? It means that um, an endless or pointless pursuit. So people working harder and harder and taking more jobs on, like they take a second or a third job and they still don't get ahead financially. They, they don't, they're, they're, they're missing the formula or they're, they're missing that key. You know, they wind up doing that their entire life and then they get old, they get cranky, maybe have some regrets and maybe wish they would have had done more with themselves or more with their life or done some things that, you know, maybe they were just living in fear. You know what I'm saying? Which is another thing that you got to kind of get over. Um, so how do you get out of the rat race, out, out the rat race? So it's easy. Uh, educate yourself on how money works and are you working for money or is it working for you? That's a question that you have to ask yourself. But if you're reading, um, if you're reading this or uh, watching this video right now, then you're probably working for money, <laughs> which is okay because everybody got to start somewhere. So um, my last semester in college, I had a financial statements class um, with my instructor, Matt Long. Uh, and I'm going to be completely honest. I did not like his ass. Not one bit. <laughs> Straight up. I just, uh, I don't know. You just, you know how you get a vibe about somebody. Like he had a, just like a suit tie wearing person and he's white. You know, you knew he had money. He was just like, all right, you know, he probably looking at us, all of us like, yeah, yeah you know, I got money. You know what I'm saying? Y'all broke as hell. Y'all in college. <laughs> and I got to teach y'all, you know what I'm saying? Finances. But so that's how I thought about it. But now that I know that my thinking was messed up, I just I thought about things the wrong way, which in in all reality, he just wanted to teach us how important knowing financial statements are. And it really is important. Um, so those documents that I'm speaking about is the balance sheet and the income statement. And to make it easy, your income statement is made up of your income and expenses and your balance sheet is made up of your assets and your liabilities uh, and they do go hand in hand you can't have one without the other so not really caring about what we were learning in class and things like that the last day was actually a blessing for me um, so a few classmates ended up sticking around we were talking about money and some other things and just having a good time and like right before we left, he was uh, telling us, you know, if you want to um, learn the material or just really want to keep digging into it, but learn it kind of easier because what we were learning was, was a little more advanced and using all these different numbers and, you know, things like that and having to figure out solutions and, you know, just doing homework kind of stuff. It wasn't really fun for me. So uh, he recommended that we read the Rich Dad Poor Dad book. And one that had sparked my memory because I had seen it before because my dad actually has the book. I just, obviously he didn't read it. <laughs> so, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so about months, some months later, you know, I ended up um, finding the book online for free. And I read it in like two or three days while I was at work. Funny, ain't it? Um, so yeah, I ended up reading that in just a couple of days and then I finished it and then immediately I was just ready to start uh, looking for other ways on what I can do and how I can draw more income in my life and things like that. But I want to go back into the income statement and balance sheet because this is exactly how you get out of the rat weight, out of the rat race and begin boosting your financial intelligence and income stream or revenue. Revenue sounds much better. It sounds like you're rich. So the key thing to learn is forgetting about your job. If you're working, forget about it. You can still be there. I'm not saying quit it. I'm just saying forget about it in your mind. Um, so tell yourself that you don't need that job to make money because realistically, you don't. You just got to figure out. You got to use your head and figure out what other things that you can do in order to make money. You know, you got a whole brain. Don't be afraid to use it. it believe me, it's very powerful. 
So train your mind. That's the first step. The second step is knowing what other things you can do to make money according to your skills. And I say according to your skills because I feel like as of right now, you have some skills that you're not really looking at that can actually make you money. Now you just got to figure out, okay, how can I turn this into a business or who can help me take this much further? And maybe we can start a partnership and get something going. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's why I say according to your skills. Okay. And then uh, this is where education comes in handy. So next, you know, make up a financial statement um, so you can see where all your money is going. And I will do that. I will create a financial statement and it'll be available for download. So I'll make sure to let everyone know if you're watching this and if you're interested in it, um, that that's going to be uh, something that you can get and for free. So uh, lastly, start paying yourself first. Um, so what what am I saying? So I'm saying every paycheck you get, take 10 percent off and keep it for yourself. So if you make if you got a five hundred dollar check, take 50 from it. If you got three hundred dollars, take 30 from it. If you got one hundred dollars, take 10. You know, what I'm saying it's just one. I feel like it's building your confidence and it's like, all right, you know, I'm paying myself first. You know, I feel good before you got to pay all your bills and then you just feel drained and you feel like you worked for free because you have absolutely nothing left over. You pay yourself first. You put that off to the side and then it's like, all right, you know, I got a little money, you know, what I'm saying to blow or whatever. You know, it might be 50 bucks, but in time you'll feel good. You'll feel you begin to feel good that you were actually doing that, that you were paying yourself first and you were not just, all right, I got to pay this bill. I got to pay this bill. I got to pay this bill. No, you, you be your first priority. Like, all right, I need to survive. I have kids. I got to have food in the house. I need milk. I need this. Boom. Focus on yourself first, then your bills. Because if you keep allowing those bills and stuff to bully you, you're just going to be miserable and you're not going to get it. Um, so, uh, it might take a little bit of time to be able to do that because not everyone is um, in that situation, especially if they're living on their own and you got kids and you're a single parent and things like that, you might not be able to do it, but just keep it in mind because eventually you will be able to do that. It doesn't matter if it's $10, $5, $3, put it to the side and believe me and just watch it stack up. Um, so now that you have those keys, let's see how you can open the door. So you open the door by learning what an asset is and what a liability is and learning the difference between the two. But if you're like me, you can kind of hear one definitely sounds better than the other. <laughs> so um, assets, they put money into your pocket. Liabilities take money out of your pocket. Plain and simple. Um, so this is where those financial statements come into play. Um, yeah, so that's where the financial statements come into play and just knowing what assets you have and what liabilities you have. But. For now, let's do a little experiment. I just want you to think about all the liabilities that you have in your life right now, which are could be bills, car payments, anything that you got to pay monthly, credit card, loan, mortgage, and other things like that. Um, now think about how many assets that you have. Uh, and it's probably only a couple things. Your job, because it's drawing in income for you, it's putting money in your pocket, and, um, and some people will probably say their house, which is somewhat true and we'll get into that later because there's going to be more videos about this so the key is to have the same amount of money coming in that you um, send out every month so what do you need to do accrue more assets get more assets and what are those those are things that put money into your pocket how I just said and what can you do that'll help you generate more income or give you more assets. And I'll give you an example, I'll just use myself. So I produce music. So what I can do is I can sell beats, I have a website so I can charge people to advertise on my website once it, once I get a, enough followers and it, it becomes a very popular page. I can sell drum kits, um, ebooks, ringtones, contracts, video tutorials, mixing tutorials, things like that. You know what I'm saying? Those are all assets and they're separate streams of income, which can put more money into my pocket every month. So my money is now working for me. If I want to increase my chances at selling, then what should I do? Now I should probably take some classes um, 
about sales. So maybe I'll go back to school, take some classes on sales. You know what I'm saying? So really I'm investing into myself. This is what this is what it's about. It's about education. Let's invest in yourself. Um, so the best thing to do is choose something that you really care about. Um, so I'll give another example. If you like graphic design, you know, you can create and sell prints, design book covers, album covers, um, and other things of the like. If you like land, you know, maybe you get into real estate, which is what a lot of people are doing nowadays and trying to do, and which can make you very wealthy if you know what you're doing. Um, so find what you like and can and continue to look for other ways to make money make money apart from your job. Um, and one thing he uh, said that he, that I really like is, you know, you don't get rich at work, you get rich at home. And what he meant by that was like, you know, you have all your greatest ideas most of the time when you're at home. And like maybe you're by yourself, maybe you're just sitting somewhere and boom, an idea comes along. But the crazy thing is, is like, you know, even though it's just an idea, it may sound crazy in your mind, you usually... Some people do it and then a lot of people don't do it because it sounds crazy or don't it don't sound believable or like you can actually do it. Well, I'm just going to say that that's not true. You know what I'm saying? If you have an idea, there's a reason why it came across your mind. I feel like you should write it down. And it might be a long-term idea. It may be a short-term idea. It's, that's, that's your job to discern whatever, you know, that is. But you should always write those things down and try to figure out, okay, why did this come to mind? You know what I'm saying? What can I do? Is this actually something that can be possible? Who, who can I get to help me make it possible? You know what I'm saying? That's what innovators did. You know, these laptops, you know, these were just ideas. People probably thought, people did think that these people were crazy. You know what I'm saying? For invent laptops, you know, this person said, all right, I'm going to come out with a, a phone that's small. You know what I'm saying? A, a cell phone. That you ain't got to use the little dial thing, you know what I'm saying? Somebody thought of that, and I was like, all right, I'm finna do it. And somebody, a whole bunch of people probably came and told them, look, hey, or him or her, like, look, that that's just not possible. You can't even do We don't have the technology. And somebody else, like, look, well, I'm going to make it possible. And that's the attitude that you got to have, you know what I'm saying? But you got to, that's where it starts. It starts in the mind, you know? So that's really what it's all about. And, yeah, so hopefully... That helps. Sorry if I spoke too fast, but definitely watch this video again. I hope that it's unlocked something for you. Like I said, write it down if you if you feel like you can implement it. And as soon as I can, I will get those financial statements ready so you can begin looking at, OK, what am I spending my money on? You know what I'm saying? Because if you see it, you can discipline yourself better if you're not really seeing or knowing what you doing with your money every month, you're just going to look up and be like, damn, you know, I just had $500. How I got $100? And can't even remember what the hell you bought. So it's better to actually see what it is that you're doing. And not only that, it gives you a sense of responsibility and accountability to what you're doing and how you make your decisions and what decision that you will make. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, hopefully that helps. Um, please subscribe. To my YouTube channel and follow me on all the social media that I've given you below. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Do not hesitate, and I will help you to the best of my ability. So, thank you. I'm Applied Knowledge, and have a good one.